Welcome back troglodytes to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a beautiful 2013 Gibson Les Paul Custom in my favorite silver burst finish. Now if you didn't already know this, this was actually my very first Gibson guitar. Not this particular one, but my first Gibson was a 2012 silver burst custom. I bought it brand new, and my mom thought I was crazy paying $4,000 for a guitar. Before this, I only had an Epiphone Silver Burst Custom, and before that, I had the Special 2 Epiphone. And this was like my first proper guitar, something that was just fantastic and over the top. It was beautiful playing, beautiful sounding, and just a really expensive guitar. Now, after I had a high-end Les Paul, I was like, you know, let's go ahead and buy a Strat. So I googled cool-looking Strat, and the first one that I saw that really caught my interest was the Antigua Strat from 1979, and it's that guitar that got me started in vintage guitars. I caught the vintage bug very quickly. I sold off my Silver Burst Custom because I wanted the vintage example, and I never did get my vintage silver burst back in those days. I actually fell in love with the tobacco burst finish and saw the 2550th anniversary model. Now that's one I was like, oh, that's too much money. I don't want to spend that much again. But it was my next Gibson guitar, and that was the 24th 2550 ever made. So let's talk the silver burst finish. When did this mysterious finish even come about? The first, like, official big year for this finish is 1979. Now that's not the first year, the actual first year of production is 1978, but there are a few prototypes in late 1977. The only 77 that's ever surfaced was a silver burst that only had the burst on the front. It had a black back and black neck. Now you either dig this finish or you don't. And personally, I'm surprised anybody can actually hate this finish. It kind of has a very evil look to it. And perhaps that's why Adam Jones from the band Tool really loves these guitars. However, there's a lot of people that love these guitars that aren't Tool fans, and they absolutely hate taking these guitars out because people go, oh, you bought it because of Adam Jones, right? And they're like, no, <laughs> I did not. I bought it because I like the color scheme. And to be honest, when I bought this guitar brand new at Guitar Center that day, I had to custom order it. All the guys were spooning around me like, yeah, I would love to come to your house to play that guitar. I think they were just trying to upsell it because I was just like some 17 year old kid buying a $4,000 guitar. Doesn't happen every day in that area. But they were asking me if I was buying this because of Adam Jones. And at that point, I didn't even know what that guy was. I didn't really find Tool until Guitar Hero World Tour. But it's thanks to their song Schism that I actually bought a bass in my younger years. If you believe Adam Jones is trolling that the silver burst finish gives you a different tone, eh, you're kind of lying to yourself. Are these significantly different sounding guitars? Mm, not in my eyes, but I'll let you judge for yourself in the sound demo test. So should you get a vintage or a modern example? I actually made a video about that a long time ago on my channel, and it was one of my most popular videos at the time when I only had like 200 subscribers. It really does all come down to personal preference. Do you like a really clean guitar that nobody else has played or has had very little play time? And do you want a more modern sounding guitar? Or do you want a more vintage spec guitar that shows wear and tear, sometimes the finish will be worn off the neck, and do you want a silver burst that has turned green? Because that's the thing with these guys, is as they age, this clear coat over them turns yellow, which then makes these guitars appear kind of a greenish hue. Now there are a million different hues of silver burst, and Gibson actually has reissued a vintage silver burst finish that has been aged. But some people only like silver bursts when they are their original look, the silver burst instead of snot burst as it is sometimes called. So it's always fun to document every stage of a silver burst's life. 
Now this one, obviously, it's still looking brand new. So the specs on this one, you have a maple top, mahogany back, mahogany neck with a rich light fretboard, and you have a Nashville style bridge with a 490R and a 498T humbucker. So now that we've learned a little bit about Silver Burst Customs, let's go ahead and hear how this one sounds. Now that we know how this guitar sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. Alright, so previous to my ownership, I believe this was a one owner guitar. There's not a lot to go over here, but there is a little bit. If we get it in the light just right, you can see some string change scratches as well as just some dirt that could be likely polished off. One of these days, I'll get like a professional buffer wheel or something and really make these guitars look terrific but I've never been sure what to actually buy because I don't want to risk damaging the guitar. Your truss rod works just fine, your neck is straight, your original nut is also present, and your rich light fretboard looks great on this example. When I bought my first Gibson Custom, I didn't even know rich light was a thing. I always just thought it was ebony. Now, what are my thoughts about rich light? I think it's fine, I really do. Unless you read all the internet forums hate for rich light simply because it's not 50 spec, you're not going to have any problems with rich light. The frets on this guitar are very clean, you just have very minor wear, hardly any at all. 
Now we'll take a look at the face of the guitar here. You can see it's got some thinnish scratches on it from picking as well as just rubbing up against your shirt. The curse of owning a black guitar is that they show absolutely everything. Anytime your shirt brushes up against this, you'll have a new set of very fine polish scratches. But thankfully, you really only see that on like the burst around the rim of the guitar, and the silver finish hides it a little bit better. As far as major nicks or dings, I really do not see any on the top of this guitar. Your chrome hardware is still in good shape, so if you can live with some fingerprints and fine polish scratches, you're in good shape on this one. Back of the headstock, our serial number is Custom Shop 300 265. And the largest blemish on this guitar is right here. It appears that the black paint layer has been rubbed off or maybe even slightly chipped off to reveal the silver undercoat. I did the exact same thing with my brand new silver burst. As I was taking it out of the case for the first time, I was like, yes, this thing is beautiful. I put it on the strap, but as I was putting it on the strap, I was holding it up and bing, hit the ceiling. Very upset with myself. <laughs> so in many ways, this one does remind me of my original Silver Burst, except for this one has a sweet lift and reissue case. Mine just had a custom shop one. So no brakes, cracks, or repairs. Once again, just light polishing swirls and average dirt. You have your Gibson Custom logo and a nice burst on the neck as well. That was one thing I remember when I got this guitar for the first time. When I custom ordered it, I custom ordered it based off of the front picture only. I wanted the teardrop shape. That's why I didn't go for the Gibson standard version of this because I wanted the teardrop shape. But I didn't know like the sides were gonna be bursted. I didn't know the neck would have it as well. This was, it was definitely such a beautiful guitar for me. Now I would say the neck profile on this one's kind of like that medium-ish 60s profile. It's not quite a 50s neck, but it's getting there. So it's got a little bit of a chunk to it, but not a lot. It's nice and rounded, and I would bet Gibson would call this the 59. The back of the guitar is kind of similar to the front. You've got some minor buckle worming marks, hardly any at all, mainly just superficial scratches for the most part. Again, the curse of the black guitar. It shows everything, but for the most part, this guitar has been kept in really good shape and it is all original. Now, I believe this is just a sticker. You can take it off, but it's not like a normal sticker. It actually feels like a metal medallion. And they eventually did switch to medallions on these. Take a quick look around the edges here. Again, beautiful burst on all the sides. That's the one thing I really liked about my silver bursts is they're just such beautiful guitars. I don't care if you have a modern silver burst or a vintage silver burst. This really is one of my favorite finishes on a Gibson Les Paul Custom. We'll do a black light test here. Obviously this is a fairly new guitar, so we're not gonna have a lot to go over, but you can see it does glow the way I would expect to see at this point in its life. The black light test really is just looking for finished touch-ups or repairs. So in this case, it shows us that we are free from any breaks, cracks, repairs, or finished touch-ups. This guitar does still retain its original Gibson lift and reissue case. The one thing I hate about these cases is they are just too darn beautiful. But somebody has already kind of scuffed this one up from storage and maybe even light gigging wear. So it's not in perfect shape, but it's still in a respectable condition. Now this is the version that has the clasps instead of the latches. You do have one traditional latch yet, but the rest of them are clasps. But the interior of these cases are just so beautiful. It's kind of a pink color, but these are Lifton styled reissue cases, similar to what these guitars came with in the 50s. Now this is the less accurate double neck rest styled case. That's technically more protective, but a little less desirable because of that for some reason. But these are nice heavily padded cases and I do suggest these. They sell for crazy money on their own. 
Inside the case also sleeps the certificate of authenticity. But if your guitar is missing this, that doesn't mean it's not a good guitar. It's just nice to have this. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Gibson Silverburst Les Paul Custom, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglys, T-R-O-G-L-Y-S. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.